Hey everybody, YouTube subscribers, Facebook friends, general guitar enthusiasts, this is Andy's free guitar chart videos. Uh, we're going to have a lesson here tonight for uh, chart number 249, which is long and short patterns for modes and chord scales and arpeggios. And uh, here, the difference between this particular chart and chart uh, 248, which is five string shapes, modes and chords, scales and arpeggios, the difference is that here we only had the short patterns and now we have the long patterns. So I had a lesson on the short patterns and now I'm going to have a lesson on both the long and the short patterns. So let's get started. The chart is basically divided into the short patterns up here and the long patterns. We have a fretboard for reference and that fretboard is a pentatonic fretboard, meaning the fourth and the seventh in the root two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, the fourth and the seventh are just darkened there, so we can tell uh, the um, we can tell the pentatonic scale. And the other notes with the letters are the string shape labels, and those are the virtual accidentals. Okay, so you have a white note for E, and then you have a note play pentatonic F, then you have F sharp here where it's an accidental note, and then the fifth, G the fifth, where you play the white notes. In that particular uh, fretboard, as you know, that's easy stuff, right? Hopefully. So let's look at, first let's look at the patterns. Okay, first let's look at the patterns. So the short pattern stack is three, four, five, six, seven, root two, three, four, five, six, seven, root two, and on and on and on. And it's listed a couple of times so we can have an entire six strings of it here, six strings of it here, and six strings of it here. The only thing to remember is when you take a pattern and you start climbing up that pattern, when you get to uh, the boundary between the G string, which would be the fifth of C, if you look at the first box on the guitar as the C box. Okay, so E would be, e would be the third of C at that point. Okay, and when you climb up using those those string shapes i call them c is three four five g is six seven root d is two three four and a is five six okay when when we hit the boundary between the g string and the b string we have to move the pattern to the right just shifts over to the right one fret so here we have normally where we'd have five, six, and then seven going over one string, and that you could play that on basically the, the lower four strings. When I consider a string to be the lower string, I mean the lower string. Okay, so with Mr. Capo here, because I'm down tuned, so we want to put Mr. Capo on here so it's E tuned like this. Okay. So the lower four strings, you would follow the patterns exactly no matter where you started. If you started on six, it would go six, seven root, two, three, four, five, six, seven root, two. So it'd be six, seven root, okay, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven root, two. Okay, so remember, I'm tuned to C down here. Okay, so probably playing it like this, something like a first uh, and second inversion combined to their actually C just has everything so it's like it's got you can do a perfect arpeggio in the C box so we have our patterns here 
Okay, and S2C just means start on the C string shape and move up to G. Here's C, go in G, we go in fifth, string shape fifth. Fifth of C is G, fifth of G is D, fifth of G, D is A. In these string shapes, as they're labeled right here, one string at a time. S3D means start on the D string shape, two, three, four, and go up three strings. Five, six, seven, root two passing through the A shape and the E string shape. Okay, so from D, we go to the A string shape and the E string shape. This is, by the way, the uh, circle for the longs, the long patterns. This is the circle for the short patterns. So we have over here, you know, starting at D, we would go up to the A and up to the E. And by the way, when you're going uh, on the caged word, Cage goes C A G E D, then starts over again, so it's C A G E D. But when we're going in fifths, we skip every other letter in the word cage. Going the other way around is in fourths, we skip every other letter in an ascending pentatonic scale. So going up in fifths is E, skip G to A, skip C to D, skip E to G. Okay? And uh, actually, uh, this is going up a pentatonic scale, so it's going up in fourths. Uh, G skip A to C, fourth of G is C, okay, that kind of thing. Going up in fourths, except when you get to the C and the E relationship. Instead of going up to the, the F on C, and, uh, you know, the, the fourth of F, we go from C to E. And it starts this, the caged circle again. And from going to E to C, if we're going in fifths, so let's say we start down here on E. Okay, we're going to we're going to uh, skip the D shape and go to the C shape. But the fifth of E is B, but we're going to go to the C shape. Okay, so we do that going down actually so starting from the e shape we go to the c shape not down to the e we just go down to the c so we've got this little major third relationship between c and e from going from c to e it's a diminished fourth going from e to c it's it's uh, an augmented fifth okay that's that's kind of what it is so we're looking at th this is the simplified uh, long version long diagram here okay so notice we have mostly our short patterns right here five six seven root two three four five six seven root two three four that would be our a shape in cage so we have the c shape c we have a shape c so we have five, six, right there. The A shape, the E shape, the C shape, the G shape, the D shape. Now you have to move it up. You have to shift over one fret when you get to the B string. B string is the entire string, no matter what note you're on. Sorry. And then, um, where were we? That was D shape, two, three, four. You know, and then we just, from D, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? What's the fifth of D? A. Where we started. Okay, so that's pretty much, it's really just the, 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 the entire, like, the everything pattern. If you insist on playing the everything pattern. But it's a wonderful thing that came about with these longer patterns. I had originally started them as patterns that I could play from the fret knot. Okay, because let's face it, if I start an E pattern from the E, here's your real deal E. Okay. If I want to do my pattern, it's going to start root two, seven root two. Right there, you can't get that seven on E regular E tuning. Can't get that seven. You can't get that uh, G sharp. 